could be live on your phone. How y'all doing? How is everybody? Here, I'm moving this. Mew is right here. She's like literally on my messy desk. There she is. There's Mew. Say hi to the people. They're looking at you. There she is, y'all. Did you see her? As this goes crooked again. How is everybody? Oh my gosh. Okay. I think there. Has anyone heard that Rose McGowan? Oh my God. No, I haven't heard that. That wouldn't surprise me, but um, yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. I know that was Mew. Before we start anything, I got to thank you all. Okay. This is part of Deanna's birthday gift to me. Y'all seen these crystal, crystal water things? Have you seen these? This is so cool. It charges your water. This is from Deanna. I went over the other night. She's like, the rest of your gift hasn't come. I'm like, I'll take that. Mm -hmm. See the crystals. So mac and cheese in bed. Delicious. Isn't it nice? It's a water. It charges the water. Isn't that cool? Right there. Very cool. That was from Deanna. And uh, she gave it to me uh, like three nights ago. She was waiting for the other stuff, but I happened to go over there random. So hi from Tijuana. Um, yeah, no, it's great. They have all the different crystals. She picked um, amethyst for me. So this is amethyst. I love it. Crystal water. I know it's so great. I put crystals everywhere. Nine months pregnant. Oh my goodness. Warrior for Christ. Aw oops. Awesome. I just went sideways when you said nine months pregnant. It's probably how you feel right? You're like, I want to go sideways. <laughs> Hi from Toronto, my hometown, my people. Um, yeah. Anyway, that was part of uh, Deanna's gift. And then I had all of your gifts that you all sent me, all of the beautiful people. Mew Mew got on the table. I had them all in order and she like literally, literally scattered it everywhere. So I have to thank you guys. First, Barbara Jean, the bracelet lady, Barbara Jean, thank you so much. Now Mew is behind the camera. Look at how beautiful. So I'm thanking Barbara Jean. I gotta, I put them, I, these might be out of order. So if I get them out of order, I'm really sorry. Um, okay, she always pronounced Yulio. Yulio, Barbara Jean, Yulio, I got it. I got it right. Um, so this was from her with the bracelets. And then I got Starbucks card. Mew got this. Now let's see who this is from. I'm so mad that she got all over it and scattered it. And I'm like, now I don't know who everything is from. Mew Mew. Okay. Well, I got a, let's see, hopefully. Yeah. This is from Beth. Beth. Thank you. Starbucks card from Beth. And I believe this is from Beth too for Mew. Okay. So, oops, so cute. Starbucks card card and Mew Mew. And I believe this is from you as well, Beth, my Leo necklace. Thank you so much. Thank you. I know Deanna's so sweet. She has more gifts coming. They just, um, you know, what's, what's to, Tallulah's a cancer, even though Diane said, um, yeah, Beth called it, huh? Even though D, um, Diane, Paige's aunt said that Tallulah was a Leo, She's no Leo. She ran straight from the shower and she whines. She's a cancer. So yeah, the bracelets are fantastic. Barbara Jean is on here. The bracelets. Ask her and she'll probably set something up with you. Okay. Yeah, this is from Beth. I wrote down on here the Starbucks card on the back and then from Mew. So I knew that. Beth, I got yours. Now, this was so beautiful. Everything's so beautiful. Who was this from? Okay. I wish I could really, really read the writing sometimes. I want to say this says Sabrina, and I'm pretty sure another Starbucks card came from her. And one from Sandy. Sandy, thank you so much. And this is from Sabrina. I think it's Sabrina. Don't kill me. I believe this came from Sabrina, the bracelet. If it didn't, I apologize profusely. Mew got on the table and literally threw everything off, so I don't even know who, what, and where everything came from. Oh my God. 
Look at these, Obsidian's arrived as well. I think these are Sabrina. Hi, Bobby. Oh my God, you already said happy birthday, Bobby, on the phone. <laughs> I'm just pointing out my presents from everybody. I think this one is from Sabrina. I hope I'm reading this right. Anyway, Sabrina, I'm pretty sure that's right. Beautiful sunflower card and the, the bracelet right there. Thank you. I'm just thanking everybody. So cool. As I said, Mew went hog wild and she knocked everything over. Um, yeah, this is from Eileen and I believe a Starbucks card came. Y'all sent me so many Starbucks card. I'm jacked up for a month. I am jacked up for a month. It's like my crack and I'm jacked up all month on the Starbucks, on the Starbucks and the air conditioning. Okay. So then we have, um, oh God. Oh, this is from Donna and she got me a Starbucks too. There's her little llama card and her card. And thank you, Donna, for that beautiful Starbucks card as well. Part of the fun for my addiction. I'm admitting it. I'm an addict. And thank you so much. Thank you so much. And then, oh shit. You know, Vernon. Vernon sent me this really, it's outside. This really, really darling um, outside cat statue solar sun, cat statue solar sun thing. Kitty that looks like Tallulah that you put outside and it gets the sun on it. So you know that one. And then this one came from, oh my God, I'm getting this all crazy. This is Nisha. I'm pretty sure this came from Nisha. She got one. Yes, this is from Nisha. These are for me and Lila. Journal books for us. There you go. From Thank you so much. Just beautiful. This one is I am kind, I am smart, and I am brave and dreamer. Beautiful. Thank you so much for that. And, oh my God, I'm missing something. I know it. I just know it. And I'm really sorry. I am so sorry. Vernon sent me that. And, yeah, Sandy got me the card. And then, Teresa, Lena, and Princess sent me a shit ton of stuff. Okay, first of all, a pink Bible. Look at that. Pink for girls. Because I'm a girl. So, my pink Bible. Awesome. And then, camouflage jacket shirt. Awesome. And then, oh my God, these flashlights. You wouldn't be surprised how many flashlights I got. These flashlights, like, you got to plug them in to do it. But this one, and then, of course, the pink one. So I've got flashlights up the ass. You know what I mean? <laughs> Don't take that seriously. You know, I got nothing up there, but I've got flashlights now. And then, oh my God. So Libra Lori, she dropped one off at my doorstep, her gift. I got home in the morning from hiking and yeah, the pink Bible's great. It's right here. I left it there. So I know where that's from. Thank you, Teresa, Lena and Princess. So Libra Lori left a package at my door and she got me all of the new um, Tarte makeup palette. So you're looking at my eyes, the Tarte, you know, because um, I'm a Tarte. So she got me that. She got me a flashlight because she goes, you need a flashlight. I'm like, I do. And so she got me a flashlight and then she got me a candle that says it's your fucking birthday. She knows this. And then the funnest thing she got me, <laughs> the funnest thing she got me was a toilet light. Cause you know, I just replaced my toilet. So she knows my toilet's clean or I wouldn't be touching it. But anyway, she, she knows cause our friend Johnny, the one that fell off the roof, he put in my new toilet. So she got me a light. Cause she's like, she's like, I don't like waking up to go to the bathroom. So I like it when there's a light in there. So this is like rainbow. She said I could pee on a rainbow. So that was the best gift ever. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, there you go. Thank you. Yes, it's outside, Jimmy Page. Okay, Vernon is Jimmy Page. Now I made the connection. Yeah, it's outside. I put it outside right away. It's so beautiful. Thank you. 
<laughs> my toilet's cool. It's all blue around the outside. Sometimes it's pink. Sometimes it's red. I like peeing on it. If I had young kids, I'd have them in there peeing on it because it seems fun. You know, um, <laughs> it seems fun, right? Mew Mew's on the jacket. It's peeing on the toilet. Oh, Bobby, you got to get one. Did you see this, Bobby, that Deanna got me? Look, crystal water, charged water. Part of the gift. She had another part, but this was over there when I was over. So this is it. <laughs> this is where it is. No, I didn't get, I didn't look. I'm on this phone, which this is a different phone. No, I haven't got it yet, but I'll tell you as soon as I do. I haven't. That doesn't mean it's not here. Yeah, the makeup is fantastic. No, you don't wear a lot of makeup. That's okay. I love makeup. I will keep wearing makeup. I feel happy when I put makeup. This is all from Tarte. Not the lipstick, but all of this. So Lori gave me this. She's like, I just found this. You're going to love it. And she wrapped it all super cool. She always comes to my door and leaves a gift. And I'm always hiking and she sneaks in when I'm not here. She sneaks in. Do you look at the art crystal? I don't know what that is. Anyway, she sneaks in. Not the point. Okay, getting on to topic, which I'm never on topic, you know, because I'm kind of whatever. So we're going to talk about A slash N slash N slash E slash H, last name initial. Do we know who we're talking about? We're going to talk about that girl so I don't get logged on the, uh, you know, whatever. I know, right? Now I need a pink one. Bobby got me a really cool shiny knapsack that could is pink and purple in the back. So yeah, we're going to talk about her. So first of all, I'm just going to say this. I, I'm saying this. I'm saying this. Honestly, this is Lori's makeup made me look super cute. Okay, so I'm saying this. Yeah, Bobby, you got me a gift already. Tarte eyeshadow. No, it's so great. This is it. Oh, like, I, whatever. I threw it on. That's what I did. And I was playing with it in the bathroom. So, you know, I could have a lot of makeup on. Uh, we're talking about A slash N slash N slash E slash last initial H who got in a car accident last week and then was taken off of, you know, support. So we're talking about her. So first off the bat, if you listen to the interview, like it is hidden in plain sight. The interview, yes, about trafficking. And she did one about chemtrails too. But here's the thing. The interview with the guy that ran the store in Venice where she got the red wig and he said it was up in the, you know, in the wherever, up in the ethers, right? Yes, her, Bobby, correct. When he, I can't say the name because I'll get kicked off of YouTube. Like, I get kicked off. I get yelled at for speaking. You know, like, don't put stupid shit in front of me and I won't have to talk about it. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Yeah, they're still going ahead with the sex trafficking um, movie, correct. And I'll probably get kicked off for saying sex trafficking. I did see the ambulance video. I don't know if that's a clone or if they took her. What I did get is I know it's complete setup to begin with. The guy at the wig store says she wasn't high, wasn't drunk, didn't look like anything was off, spoke to her really nice, right? Oh, 36 number on the ambulance. They're such cock teases, aren't they? Oh, no, we don't see the number. Huh? You know, whatever. But anyway, the guy at the Venice wig store, he's literally talking about her being, you know, fine, right? So... Are we, because it's probably 12 minutes away from that store to where she was going. And suddenly she creams off the road and runs into a house and catches fire. The car catches fire, which that's easy to do. You just throw a match in the gas tank and you can make the car catch fire. So they do that all the time under the bridges. They burn up cars for no reason. Um, and, and, okay. I don't know if sacrifice would be the word. You know how they're always saying we sacrifice. I sacrifice for my kids. I sacrifice for my work. That's bullshit. Never use the word sacrifice. Um, I would say more along the lines that when you're, yes, planned disappearance. Exactly. When you're jumped into a gang and you do that, you basically are either going to get taken out by the gang or you're going, I don't know. It was a gift from Deanna. It was a gift. I'm sure you can look it up online. I didn't ask where she got it. Anyway, um, it's just really interesting. But the guy in the Venice wig store says she was fine, okay? So she just didn't get high leaving the wig store. 
and go cuckoo out of her mind at 12 miles down the road or 12 minutes later and slam into a building. And when I was watching her drive down the street, I immediately felt that she was taken over by something. I do, God doesn't intervene here. He didn't make the deal. They do this to themselves. They do it to themselves. If she made a deal at any point in time in her life, then there's repercussions for your actions. Just like every, it's jump out of the gang. Exactly, exactly. So she could either be planning this, but I actually think it's a clone, which is a weird thing to say. I feel like they've trapped her consciousness already. So I feel like her consciousness has been trapped and what they do with that, I don't know how they do it, but they suck it out of you and they put it somewhere else. And then they put the physical over here that doesn't have the soul in it. That looks like the person. And I'm convinced that's going on. Call me crazy. Call me stupid. Call me whatever. I'm still convinced that's going on. Okay. I'm sure she had information on Ellen. Here's the thing. If you have information on Ellen and you're fucking Ellen, which is a disgusting thought in and of itself, but it, look at Ellen's face. It's just like she wears her face, you know? But if you look at Ellen, right, and you're living with Ellen and you're sleeping with Ellen and you know how Ellen got where Ellen got, then like, are you like a mafia wife and you're just turning your back at night while your husband goes out and fucking unloads on a building because they didn't pay? Is that what you're doing? Yeah, she had an unfortunate relationship with Ellen is right. She all, I mean, like she knows she took the money. She took the thing. She was also somebody that took, and I'm not going to speak badly about her because she has children. So I'm not saying that. I'm just saying she didn't have a preference in male or female. She went with both. Um, she was dating Steve Martin. I think I've got to look that up. Actually, I'm pretty sure I, I know that, but I got to look it up. I want to know if she was dating Steve Martin. Okay. It was and Heish dating Steve Martin. I want to see. I think she dated Steve Martin, too. So that's like a weird... Well, they're two comedians, I guess. Um, yeah, she did. Yeah, she did date Steve Martin. That's very strange. Um, most of the time, she dated men. Most of the time. Yeah, uh, from 94 to 97, she dated uh, four years in the 90s. Yes. So Anne is my age and Steve is however old he is. So another age difference in balance. But a lot of times I think they're handlers and all kinds of things. Um, yeah, it's very interesting. And I did see the video where she gets up. I did see that. But the wig store guy says there was nothing wrong with her. So I'm just going to put this out there. Don't get mad at me. Um, Steve Martin popular. Yeah, of course it did because you know, whatever. People's popularity goes in and out. People like you, then they don't like you, you know, whatever. But I'm just going to say it like this, all right? I'm going to say that if she was indeed on cocaine, if she was indeed on, co where's Mew? Where is she? I don't know where she went. If she did, yeah, if, if she did indeed do cocaine, she's not going off the road on cocaine. She's just not. Like, that's what drunk people do on the way home is they snort cocaine to stay on the road. So what made her go off the road? Here's what I got. This is what I got. I'll do a whole thing on it later, a video. But yeah, the podcast is with Heather. I know Heather. I know her I, because Heather had called me. Oh my God. I don't even know when I have the text. I didn't respond because I did not want to do a reading with Anne. This was probably the end of last year. Or maybe when they started the podcast in January. I honestly can't. I have to look it up. Let's see. I don't know if I still have Heather's um, text in my in my phone. Because this is a new phone. But anyway. Um, Heather Duffy used to. You know. I, I used to know her. My former. I don't have her number anymore. Anyway. She had texted me and asked if her and Anne could come to the studio. And at the time I just was not interested in reading and like my body was just like, no. So I didn't respond. Um, Heather's lovely. I love Heather. Uh, she's just lovely. So I don't have a problem with her, but I did with Anne. I do not know her. My, I'm just saying my body. Yes. They said fentanyl with, they, they said fentanyl with cocaine. 
Did she know about the cocaine, the fentanyl and the cocaine? And why was she okay at the wig store? And 12 minutes later, she's bonkers and out of her mind, speeding down the road. I'm going to tell you why. This is just my theory, okay? This is just my theory when I looked at it. Number one, MK Ultra. Thank you. Yes. MK Ultra. But let's look at this a little bit different. When you when you give yourself over to things that bring you 3d pleasures money sex women go you know um cocaine whatever they said cocaine and fentanyl but did she actually do cocaine and it was laced and she had no idea and if so why didn't the wig store guys see that or yeah it's not just childhood trauma you got to be greedy to sell out you've got to be greedy to sell out if you agree to make those deals, you are going against God and agreeing to do it. Let's call it what it is. I don't know that she did that, but let's call that what that is. Yes, baking in Palm Springs. Yeah, I bet. Nobody climbing through that desert. But you know what I'm saying? Like, you've got to pretty much, truthfully, think about it. It, it doesn't matter what your childhood is. The fact that you sell out in order to cheat, in order to gain more money, more power, more fame over everybody else, whoever you are. And Roseanne Barr said she did it when she was 12. The fact that you do that, you have a level of greed because you want to win. You don't want to play fair. You don't want to do anything. And you probably know you can't play fair on this planet. And God does not intervene when you step away from God until you're held out there. And maybe that's part of the incarnation thing. But you are a greedy person. The fact that you think you should have more than other people when you sell out. I'm only talking about people allegedly that do that, right? Yes, exactly. But still, she was part of it or she wouldn't have been in it to not be part of it, okay? Um, yeah, the car was going like she was being chased, but here's what they do when they MK Ultra. And let's look at it different. Bobby and I have been talking about scopolamine, in, in reference to Isaac Cappy and probably the other one that died, the reporter Tracy, we've been talking about scopolamine. And no, I'm not going to shut my mouth. I'm still not going to shut my mouth. Sorry. I wish I could. Sorry. Call someone who cares. I cannot shut my fucking mouth. Okay. Anyhow, scopolamine, all they do right now is come right up and they do that. Two seconds in your face. Here's a pen. These are crystals in the pen. Just say it's a powder and I come up to you and I'm in a wig store and I'm like, hi, Anne. And it's in your face. It's a hypnotic. Let's understand. When they get you into a hypnotic sense, okay, hypnotic. When they get you into a hypnotic state, your physical body and your soul body separate. So when the soul body steps outside of the physical then something can get into the physical while the soul body is out here. Understand, under a hypnotic or hypnotic gnosis type of drug, your physical, I mean, your spiritual body is over here. If your spiritual body is over here, right, and something is driving your car, your, your vehicle, and you are aware of it, but you can't control your hands or your feet or whatever, Thank you for that. Thank you for that. So if you can't control that, you're basically in trouble because you're now in a car driving down the street, right? You're telling your brain, move, move, but your brain is not doing what you want it to do because you are here in the spirit body and the physical has another driver. So it's like you're in the passenger seat of your car. Well, devil's breath, exactly. Exactly. You're in the passenger seat and she's driving the vehicle, her physical, but she's like, why won't it do what I want? Another analogy. When I first started doing races in altitude, I would get so altitude sick about 80, I'm sorry, 8,900 feet for me really screws up my head. So by the time I get to close to 10,000 feet and I'm racing to the top, right? And I get to the 10,000 foot mark my brain, like there could be, there's a tiny trail and you're ra racing to the finish line. Okay. When I first started doing altitude racing in 2008, literally there would be people in front of me where I could touch them, like my arm leg. I could not make my brain do it. And I knew I could get around them, but I could not make my feet do it. 
It drove me crazy because the altitude or hypoxia that stops the brain from thinking would not let me move. And it was the most peculiar thing because I knew what was going on. I knew I was sick, but it was like I was drunk and unable to move my body. Like I'd be following someone up and on their heels and I did not have the strength and presence of mind to move around them to get across the finish line first. And that was alcohol poisoning. So, I mean, alcohol poisoning, what the hell am I saying? <laughs> felt like alcohol poisoning. That was altitude sickness. So just imagine if somebody blows in your face and you don't even know it and they tell you drive really fast, someone's chasing. Yeah, altitude, not alcohol, but it's like alcohol poisoning. You can't move. So let's say you do that and you're there. MK Ultra is a form of trauma. Now, what I want you guys to understand too, a lot of these people, when you talk, Kelowna checking in, hello, uh, is it Colette? Yes, in Kelowna, Colette in Kelowna, C with a K. All right, so a lot of people, when they are MK altered, they are raised in trauma abuse in order to do what people want them to do. They are literally raised in trauma. So they are trauma bonded as small children. It's not even like a joke. They are literally trauma bonded in childhood. So they are, um, you know, uh, intermittent, reinforcement like oh my god i love the baby oh fuck the baby and leave the baby in the crib for a day let it cry they are also uh you know not fed they are sexualized <laughs> they have all of those things happening and they are continually traumatized until they split if you abuse a child under the age of four yeah, from South America devil's breath from South America exactly they put it into a powder and then Scopolamine. Scopolamine. Just say it with me, y'all. Scopolamine. Don't stand too close to anybody. Scopolamine. Lasts in the body 48 hours and no one checks for it. So if you don't check for it, it's gone by the time the family member gets there and says, check with, check for it. So it's not like it, when Keith died, they did the, the regular, um, and we didn't do an autopsy, but without an autopsy, without anything, they checked for cocaine, um, alcohol, uh, different kinds of weed, like Delta weed and other kinds of weed. Uh, they checked for, there were like three other things, benzo, you know, whatever, benzo, you know, benzo, diazepam, <laughs> all of those kind of psych meds and shit. That's without an autopsy. I didn't get an autopsy for my Keithy. So that's that's without that and so anybody goes into a corner they're checking for that but they are not checking for devil's breath or scopolamine and there's tons of weirdo witches out there that use it to do stuff with so they can put it in your tea they can put it in pills they can crush it they can snort it they can do all kinds of things with it so that's a thing and it's a, it's a hypnotic now what's another drug that's a hypnotic ambien ambien is a hypnotic when ambien is a hypnotic if you've seen people and i had many including john that drove on ambien my friend margaret on ambien they drive all over the place on ambien okay they had no memory of it they took ambien and they just fucking drove it's like, why are you driving on Ambien? <laughs> What's going on? Like my friend would go literally wake up and have cherry Slurpees beside her bed and be like, word you said is in the COVID shot. Scopolamine. Okay, yeah. Well, then that's the hypnotic suggestion. Um, but, but Ambien is something that people take all the time and they're always, it's a hypnotic, they're always out doing something. In other words, the body, the vessel is functioning and the spiritual is to the side. So you leave the host open. You don't want to do that. Yeah, no, I don't take sleeping pills. I mean, I, unless I didn't sleep. But I wouldn't take Ambien because it's a hypnotic. It says on it, it's a hypnotic. So yeah, she definitely did not do this to herself. I do not believe what they're saying. Call me a conspiracy crazy. I don't believe what you're saying. The guy in the wig store talked to her. She was fine. It was 20 minutes before she crashed. So he said she's fine. She is doing a movie about trafficking and she probably, okay, was already a clone. I just know when they asked to come in for a reading and my lovely little friend asked to bring her, her partner, that's Heather that does a podcast. I did not want to even answer the text. So I did not answer the text because I did not want to get near Anne, which is weird. I don't know the woman. That was just my body instinct. Like sometimes I'll do that. You can offer me a shit ton of money and whatever, and I won't do it. Tiger's blood, Charlie Sheen, tiger's blood. Yeah. 
Tiger is falling. Tarishin equals Anne Hash. Tiger. Okay, I don't understand that. Come back and tell me. Anyway, I just didn't want to meet the woman. And maybe she would have asked me something or I would have picked up on something. I don't know because I didn't meet her. But I didn't answer the text back. However, her podcast partner is lovely. So they make jokes and not always everybody is shit-faced on it. The guy in Venice says she was on nothing and spoke normally. So I'm going to go with him because he's the last person unless he <sighs> scopolamined her, right? So, um, yeah, she probably had depression issues. When you traumatize a child on purpose in order to ritually sodomize them, hear me clearly, it is a thing that they do, ritual sodomy, ritual sodomy, uh, three weeks ago and I'm still sick. Wait, I had surgery. Jamie, what kind of surgery did you have, honey? Give yourself a chance to recover. Oh, what kind of surgery did you have? Um, understand, understand when they ritually and the word sodomy, that's why they do all of these jokes about sex up the backside of your body because it immediately harnesses into your energy immediately goes up through all the chakras and hooks into the crown chakra. It's how they get in and it's how they get out. If they traumatize you in that way, like this, to a baby, you just know what I'm saying. If they traumatize you, immediately it pops open your third eye. When it pops open your third eye, they can get in there energetically and harness your energy. So when that happens, Jamie, tell us what's wrong with your surgery, honey. When that happens, when that happens, you understand they do come from traumatized family. They do come from that, okay? That's what they come from. But it's not trauma like your garden variety, weird drunk alcoholic, trailer park, wife beater. Now I'm wearing wife beaters all the time. But you're, you know, your guy out of the trailer park, um, third of her siblings dead. Her father died of AIDS in the 80s. Her father died of AIDS. Interesting. Needle junkie or participating in quick pro quo to get his family where he needed to get them. So it's quick pro quo. You got it? So when you look at it, Jamie said hysterectomy. Oh, honey, you got to give yourself a little bit more time. Hysterectomy hits your hormones too. And it's hard. Oh, my God. Okay, I'll pray for you later, but I'm positive you're going to be okay. That takes a little while to clear up. And it removes you know, that part of the body, which is attached to a lot of things. So therefore there's a lot of emotions, I believe. Um, he was gay. Okay. So he was gay, Mindy. So he was gay, gay for play, gay for, I want my daughter in the movies, gay for whatever. Yeah. The hormones It's probably the hormones. Exactly. Instant menopause. Exactly. He was closet homosexual. So many of them are, so many of them are, so many of them are. Hollywood is not gay. Hollywood is ritualized through the sodomy or the actions that gay people do. That's why they want you to accept every single kind of thing out there on the market, which is fine. If people want to be however they are, go be that. But they want you to accept it, and it's ritualized in a lot of these instances. So a lot of people in the industry ritualize that action in order to to get ahead, okay? So it's a ritual. The men with men, the women with women, the feces eating, you know. You know. So, uh, yeah, they can remote control. Absolutely, they can remote control it. And she can't, she wasn't driving it. That's obvious to me. She's not, she was in Mar Del Vista or Del Vista or wherever, Playa Del Rey, wherever, up there. She's not doing that. I'm just looking at it going, this guy says this, suddenly she's driving like a lunatic on the side of the road. Um, oh my God, there you go. Quick pro quo. That's what they're doing. That's why you got the Kardashians bleaching their rear ends and everybody talking about it and teaching you how to do it because they want you to do that so that you think nothing of it. When you think nothing of it, they're able to do that their stuff behind the scenes, behind what you're doing now where you think it's normal. Um, so when you think it's normal, you're like, well, everybody does this. No, these people are doing it for a specific reason and it's to corrupt the soul energy. 
So their intention is to break down the human being. And it really hurts on children. So this is how they fracture their minds. When you've been sexualized before you're verbal, I'm talking about sexual, childhood sexual abuse before you are verbal, you are fractured mentally. You don't even understand why you react because you're so fractured, okay? It hurts and they've got no outlet for it. The baby can scream, they can do all kinds of things. Remember, they start selling these children at age four and they start passing them around. So look at somebody like Amanda Baines, okay, or Bynes. I always say it wrong. Anne Hesh, Hesh, and I just said it, and I'm probably going to get in trouble. But um, Amanda Bynes, Baines, however you say it. Look at her. Look what happened to her. We go, oh, my God, they're crazy. They're not crazy. Who are they reacting to, okay? Um, let's see. That is, hold on. Who are they reacting to in their life? Who are they reacting to? Wait, wait, wait. How do men that is owed to you and refuse to be given back? Um, maybe the way to do that is to manifest money, not necessarily from the person who owes it to you, because sometimes those bitches aren't going to pay you back. Sometimes they're not going to pay you back. So maybe it is just to get the money back and not worry about where it comes from. Even though it should, it can come from another source. Money can come from a bunch of different sources. So Anne, literally in childhood, to be traumatized... And to end up with Steve Martin and Ellen, come on now. And the only reason people sell out, the only reason is because they want to be the best at what they're doing, um, right? They want to be the best at what they're doing. They want to make more money than you, and they don't care what they have to do to get it. It's kind of like a rape mentality. It's like they're going to rape the planet, rape the TV, rapey, 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 everything in order to get what they want because it's important for them to have it because they're stuck in a 3D. But once you do that, you step away from God. Once you step away from God, you continue to live and live. They're part of the recycling thing where they go back and back. And I actually think she's a clone. So, and they trap consciousness. I've dreamt of that. They actually trap consciousness. So they trap your consciousness. Joe, thank you for that. Oh my God, thank you. More Starbucks money, Joe. <laughs> Starbucks. No, she did not. No, she did not commit. She did not take her... She did not take herself off the planet. At the very least, she had two children that are teenagers. She wasn't going to give up her children. Come on now. She was not going to give up her children. It doesn't matter if she's a good actress. People say that all the time. They say that about Tom Hanks. I just had this discussion. Well, it doesn't matter if he's a Rothschild. He was a good actor. No, they're given gifts because they allow themselves to go into the world, to step away from God. So it's written for them. It's done for them. And it's expressed through them. Now, I have no idea if that's what she's di she did, but I do feel like that's a clone, and I feel like they trapped her consciousness. If your consciousness, okay, if your consciousness is trapped like a firefly in a glass, you can't get out of that glass. So your thoughts, your ideas, your mind is all over here, and they just shut down your physical. They take the spiritual and hold it outside of the astral level. You didn't know that, did you? So the, so the spirit body, there's emotional, mental, physical, and spiritual, okay? So all of these um, that combine to be us, all right? The only thing that we drop when we die is the physical. So this, like Sloan, this, you know, all of this, we drop this. So we cross out of the physical, and then you have the spiritual components, mental, emotional, um, and the, the, that can make up the whole physical, I mean, the spiritual body. When the spiritual body is captured and held away from this dimension, while well, the consciousness, the memories, the ideology of the person, all of that is held in a firefly jar, you're fucked because your soul is out here and you've stepped away from God and you don't know where you are. You don't know what's happening. Your memories are in some other physical, okay? Some other physical. Thank you for that, Lisa. More Starbucks money. Sorry, all the money's going to Starbucks this month. That's horrible. Coffee bean, okay? And tea leaf. I'll take it there. But that's what happens. Thank you so much for that, you guys. Thank you. That's what happens. That's the shit that happens. So you sell out. Immediately, you're pulled out of your body or you're put to the side like you're on a hypnotic or in a hypnotic way. Once you're in a hypnotic way, how do you really respond? And then you do the drugs and alcohol to keep yourself from knowing. At times, there are people at times that will come into their physical body and know that they should be occupying it, but they can't get in. And it's a struggle 
for the soul. It's actually a struggle for the soul. And so we don't look at the world that way. We They call you crazy when you think like this. They call you all kinds of things when you think like this. I'm like, why do you think the Catholic Church has exorcisms? Just, I want to know why. Because, like, you believe that shit, but you don't believe other stuff. But I've seen souls leave the body. I've seen souls. Bobby captured Keith's Keith soul leaving his physical body. She captured the soul leaving. The physical energy of the soul leaving on the film. Like, she blew up the film to see the soul leaving. I've seen several people that were not my family leave. So you're an observer of your physical body. So, and then your consciousness, the way that you think, the way that you are politically, what you thought about your kids, your sexual experiences, your education experiences, the people you loved, you're in a jar like a firefly. And they put that into another vesicle, vessel and then you don't have the physical strength to connect your soul body with the consciousness because this physical body is detached from the soul body. Therefore, the honing device is not there. So you're trapped over and over and over again, incarnated over and over and over again, and born into these families where they traumatize deliberately. Whether anybody thinks so or not, I don't care what you think. I don't want to hear it. I Go ahead and talk to someone else. Talk to the hand. But that's actually what happens. So her brother took himself out the same way, drove into a tree or a pole. Yeah, okay, sure. Not buying it, not buying it. Sorry, not buying it. She would have done it by now if that's what she was going to do. So I am not doing, I'm not believing that. I saw that vehicle driving, that was not her. So when the spirit body, all of its combinations, okay, emotional, medical, uh, mental, emotional and spiritual is out here and it's captured in a different dimension they just usher you in think of a big large parking lot right think of a big big large parking lot big large parking lot and think of parking on the 18th floor but thinking you parked on the eighth floor leaving your car over there and clicking the beeper but not being able to hear it beep so you're like I don't know where my car is because you can't hear it. But you got off the wrong floor. You got off 10 floors too early. So the soul body is on the 18th floor. The consciousness is on the 8th floor. The physical is on the 3rd floor. The consciousness is trying to connect its wiring, but it's on a different dimension, different level. Can't connect. Therefore, they've trapped the consciousness They've trapped the consciousness. Sandra D was another one that we didn't understand. Sandra D was put into an adopted family or a chaperone family to watch her where she was sexualized, traumatized, became an alcoholic, could barely function, anxiety ridden because she's fragmented. Fragmented. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, I don't know why you're bringing up another tarot channel. <laughs> what do I care? You can have your mind made up on whatever. I feel the energy around it, so I wait until I'm convinced of what happened. I can tell you she's cloned. I can tell you what's going on. Um, and keep in mind, when you're talking about tarot reading versus psychic versus mediumship, those are different things. If you're a card reader, you're a card reader. If you're a psychic and a medium, those are different things. Tila Tequila, um, her girlfriend, one of her girlfriends. No, I take that back. The hell's her name? Courtney. Courtney that dated the Johnson & Johnson heiress, okay? She dated the Johnson & Johnson heiress, and so did Tequila, Tila, Tia Tequila, whatever her name is. That one did as well. Anyway... Courtney had to leave the country because of Weinstein, because he was breaking into her house. There was a connection to Rose McGowan with that. And of course, they're going to get even with her because Rose was probably raised in a cult family. And Rose probably stepped aside and went a wall. Oh, body, that body over there. Exactly. Well, that's there's there's bodies walking around with nobody in them. And Tila Tequila. Thank you. I'm like, you know, that one. The Johnson and Johnsons, yes. Well, so did Courtney. And Courtney's dad ran Warner Brothers. Um, Semmel, Courtney Semmel. She was on she was on a bunch of shows. Anyway, Courtney, literally, when that Weinstein thing was happening, was at the forefront of it. She used to come to the house, tell me about that shit. They were breaking in and fucking with her computers. So she literally left. 
She left the country, okay? So Weinstein has tentacles out there, but understand another thing. You can be, if you have not sold out or gone into the cults or been jumped into the gang, like they jump in the 10 year olds, they get you to blow someone's brains out. Now they've got you by the balls your whole life. And if you try to leave, they'll just put a cap in your head, same shit. So all these people maybe did some things or maybe were born into it, you know, for whatever reason, but they were born into a gang banging type of cult, I guess. And look what happens. They are retaliated against. You're retaliated against. If you stick under the umbrella of God, pray with God in the name of Jesus, amen. Even if you were in the cult, even if you did bad shit, when you die, because you're going to die on this side, you will die on this side. You're not going to, you're not going to make it out of that. So if you've sold out, you will die here. They will take you out. Kelly Preston being a, an example of that big time. They will take you out. You will be taken out. Like you, that's a sellout thing. So don't sell out for money. It's so temporary here. And they're known as, when you talk about parasites, vampires, and the, the undead, see when they talk about, when the Christians go bananas, those particular group of them that say, if you're psychic, you're talking to demons. What they're actually talking about is when you talk to the dead, you're talking to demons. Your dead relatives, if they're not sold out, they are not dead. They are in a different dimension. They are in a different latitude energetically. So it's like you're living in, you know, South Central and they're living in London. So you don't know about them in London because you can't see them in London and no one's telling you they're in London, but they're not dead. Dead are people who have sold out and stepped away from God. Those would be your vampires. And what I mean by that is they've agreed to live forever and ever and ever. Now let's look at the Green Mile. Let's look at Tom Hanks' character in the Green Mile. He took the deal from Michael, what's his name, Dunk Clark Duncan. He took the deal and it went into him and he kept outliving everybody. He outlived everybody. He was a vampire. He was showing you what happened. He absorbed that and he kept it. Now, I don't know why it would have come from the psychic, okay? No, Randy Quaid wasn't, and I have, I know you guys aren't going to believe me, but Catherine, who used to come to my house, she's from Vancouver. She was a lawyer. She handled Randy Quaid. We literally, because David Carradine's uh, third wife, Marina, is a friend of mine, we sent Catherine to connect with that, to connect with her. I think it went through Marina. No, not crazy at all. Star whackers, star whackers, murderers of gang members that we call celebrities, stars, okay? Just call them MS-13. Just put that in there and say, this one killed that one. Anyway, Catherine went and took that case on because she went to Canada because she was Canadian. So... Well, Kelly Preston, come on now. You don't think she married Travolta and went through all of that for no reason, do you? Star Whackers. What he's saying is there is a gang of people killing people for no reason and taking over their money and their assets. It's all about the almighty dollar. That's what it's about. But they are literally, literally selling themselves. Because remember, Satan is a liar. Star, yeah, no, Star Walkers are real. Star Whacker, Bobby, um, Randy Quaid, Star Whackers. So, no, he was truthful. David Carradine was murdered, okay? I got the call that morning. I, I Marina wrote about it. He was murdered. Problem is, and I'm going to give you guys just this thing. When I was younger, I learned, if anybody knows that you have a perversion, a secret, a drug addiction, a bad habit, kleptomania, choking yourself during sex, whatever it is, they will use it against you. They will pub make it public and they will say, you died from that. You're setting yourself up. I knew it was a setup to begin with. I knew it. I thought it as a kid. I thought I ain't giving anybody a fucking reason to turn around and do that to me. Cause I know as soon as I show you my weakness, whatever it is, you will use it against me. And people do all the time. I mean, just in a divorce, they use whatever emotional weakness or whatever you have about your son or whatever. They use that shit. 
But if you're a drug addict, they say you overdose, Mac Miller. If you're a Vici and you like to drink, you drank too much. If you're Chris Cornell, suddenly you're just popping pills and hanging yourself from your exercise band backwards with a bump on your head. Chester Bennington, you buy a new house, your kids are moving in. You're sober, but you think you'll hang yourself on the stairway because you set yourself up to be on drugs. You set the fuck yourself up to be on drugs. So Little Peep, yeah, Little Peep used to get drugs from some of the kids at Burbank High. He used to sleep on their floor. Some of the story Keith told me. Anyway, um, he was younger, but they're, you know, whatever. He used to go to some of the kids, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, Little Peep was, Little Peep was taken over. That video was horrifying to me. It's horrifying to me. So when you look at people, understand. When you're looking at somebody like Mac Miller and they're like, or Janis Joplin, she's a known heroin addict. Once you let the public know that, then the handlers know that, then the gangbangers know that. You must keep your autonomy so that it's without a doubt that somebody knows you didn't do that. If you are sober, you're not doing that. If you allow yourself to give in to the pressures and to self-medicate, if you allow that to happen, that becomes a huge problem. They will use it against you when they kill you. That's what they, oh, David Carradine, oh, he hung himself during sex. No, he did not. There were three people in there with him because I did a reading on it before it even hit the papers, okay? That's what they do. They use it against you. Now, let's go into a narcissistic. If they're trying to deflect from taking responsibility, they'll be like, you did this. You did this. It doesn't matter what the fuck I did. Deal with the question on point right here. Deal with the fucking question. When it comes to Anne, she has a drug history. So it's really easy to say, she's drinking, she's stupid, she did la 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 la, like that. Anna Nicole Smith, hotshot. Absolutely. Very fucking easy. And she was under MK Ultra. She was completely under MK Ultra. Remember, she's pregnant and they're putting the clown face on her and Howard Stern's filming her and she's talking like a five-year-old. She's MK Ultra, the singer that used to be a client of mine. Very, very well-known singer. Not going to say her name. Had a TV show, Young Woman, Cancer Sun Sign. You're all going to have to guess it. Anyway, when I did the reading at her house, she curled up on my lap like a little girl. That's an altered personality, I believe. Okay, that's an altered personality. She was cute. She's my kid's age. I don't have a problem holding anybody if they want to curl up in my lap for a reading. But that's a personality. Okay, well, she's 20. She might be Keith's age now, 27 or 28. Very, very, very well known. Very well known. My friend was her. Yes, exactly. My friend was her costumer. I met her through a realtor though. But anyway, so I, I went there and she curled up. All the hair came on. She was like a little girl. And she was sweet. So, and she's a cancer. So she's very, very sweet. I have no problem with that. I've done all kinds of readings on people upside down in their beds. I used to cr crawl into clients' beds. It's a female clients. Sit there and do the reading in bed. Wherever you want, that's what we do. We do, you know, whatever's comfortable. They cry on your shoulders. I had clients come in my house and sleep on the couch, like very famous people that married very famous action figure men fall asleep on my house, on my couch, sit at my kitchen table, go in my kitchen. This is what they do because they, they are also releasing things on an emotional level. Okay. No hypnotized. Yes, absolutely. She's a singer, not Selena Gomez. No. Um, yes. Yes. Blair. Blair G is correct. And everybody out, look, I'm blinking my eyes so much makeup on my eyelids. <laughs> I put so much on. I'm like, Oh, they're tired. Um, yeah, so they do come in, but they come in in different states of being. Sometimes you get this one. Sometimes Anna Nicole was very, very direct and very nice as a client, okay? But I know she didn't trust the people in her life. She only trusted Sandy. I mean, I don't know if she trusted other people, but she definitely trusted Sandy, who did her hair and her makeup. Sandy with the red hair on the show, and, and that's how I know her from. And I know Sandy from her ex girlfriend, Jody way, way back in the day before Sandy got on that show. So Sandy will always call me with, you know, whatever the issue is. So it's really interesting. Um, yeah, my eyes. Lori gave me a bunch of makeup and I slapped it on. I slapped it on. Yeah, Dan Schneider. Oh my God. Do you know? This is a true story. So I'm at our cousin's uh birthday party, summer party, John's cousin, okay? Anyway, one of the girls there, Dana, just going to say her first name, 
had a child that worked with the other girl that crawled in my lap on Nickelodeon and actually could have gotten quite far in her career. I think she does exercise now. I can't remember the daughter's name. Anyway, I was at a Christmas party and I was talking about Dan Schneider, right? Saying what a piece of shit pedo he was. And at my cousin, which is really John's cousin, my cousin through marriage, party up, I mean, the huge backyard parties, you know, everybody's there. Up walks the mother that I see at all the parties. And she's like, yeah, my daughter got in on that and my daughter quit, lost her income, lost her popularity, but quit because that guy was such a pig. So this is new, not news to anybody. I hear it all the time behind the scenes. I hear everything. I work with so many people in the industry. We hear so many things. Well, Nickelodeon is only there to indoctrinate your children, okay? Yeah, well, not only that. Jamie Spears has a kid by him. It's just, it's really not. And I've been saying this for years. I have been saying this. Yes, and Amanda Bynes, I've been saying this for fucking years, okay? I got called crazy. I got called, you know, whatever. Now my face is going red as I'm saying it. Anyway, I got called all kinds of fucking names, okay? Like a crazy bitch. And I'm like, I'm actually hearing it from people that were on the show on Nickelodeon, their parents and their kids, okay? Like I'm hearing it. It's not a joke. Yeah, it's not a joke. And I've been saying it. And they're like, oh, you're you're paranoid. Oh, look, I'm my tan is like, my body is literally getting redder. I'm having a hot flash, y'all. Um... Yes, I will. Let's see. Yeah, don't put it on you. I will do another video on that. Yeah, no, that I, that I will. Thank you for that. Um, no, it's definitely something that goes on. And understand, you when they talk about the casting couch, what they Lori bought me the makeup for my birthday. I put so much on my lashes <laughs> are being weighed down. Um, they will not. They will not allowed dan schneider should have been arrested put in jail instead they fired him must be nice to be fired dan schneider and not put in jail because your husbands would be put in jail my husband would be put in jail right but not dan schneider and what did that fat fuck ever do they say he's so creative no he sold out he sold out mm -hmm. hot flash y'all menopause look at from Deanna. So good. I just like drinking it with little crystals in it. <laughs> mm. Anyway, Dan Schneider, I've been saying this for years. I was saying it way before Keithy died, way before I had the YouTube channel at the parties. That's all I was talking about. And people are just like, why would they do that? Not everybody wants children. It's not about wanting children the way you think that they want children. Yeah, I had a hot flash. Look at, look, it's down. Now I'm white again. I was beat red. Um, it's not about them wanting children. Like, again, the odd person who is has a predilection for children. They are harnessing children's energy. This is ritualized sexualization of children. It's not because they like children the way that you think they like children, like like a wife or a husband. It's not that. This is ritualized, okay? This is, yes, you're 48, yes. That's what I said. I, that's what I said. When a girl hits, like, just about before she's about to get her boobs, all these fucking men, they want, they want you. It's all these men want. They don't want you when you're a grown-ass woman that can set your goals. Oh, fuck no. They'll fuck you, but then they'll go behind your back and screw your kids. You have to be careful. Um... That's all part of the ritualization. Understand, understand. When they do these ritualized ceremonies, they have parties. Like you have a Christmas party or a Thanksgiving party, only they have a friend invite only, the who's who party. And you will go up and there will be somebody tied on a chair whose feet you will lick. And you will get off doing that. And you will do that publicly because that's what they do. They will have women on women, men on men, switch gender, whatever. This is what they do. This is what they do. This is how they engage in things. And I don't care what you say to me. I don't care how you threaten me. 
fucking, I don't care. But that is what they do. So we are dealing with people. John Benet Ramsey was dead. Hello. I'm just, stop right here. There was a lab in wherever, just say Georgia, where they were going to run the DNA from the John Benet Ramsey. Why aren't you doing that ASAP? But the Denver police won't release it. Why? Were they in on it? Why won't they release this? I mean, I'm sorry. What? Chaos causers. No, John Benet Ramsey was deliberate deliberate okay and it was quick pro quo and that's all i'm saying i did a video on it but it was quick pro quo then the lab to go get it go get a court injunction and get john benet ramsey's dna her father says he wants it in there so go do that go do that oh my god it makes me so angry just go do it go do it shut up and go do it get a lawyer to take it right into court Get it out of the area. Go somewhere outside in Colorado, in another place, wherever. Get it done. Get an injunction. Get the DNA. It belongs to his daughter. The police are useless on that case. So go to this lab and do it. Just fucking chop, chop. Do it. I don't get it. Oh, the McMartin Preschool. Now, here's an interesting thing. One of my friends has an employee whose cousin was in the McMartin thing. They tell you that that's fake. They make it outlandish. So you think it's fake. They tell you about the kids doing this and the kids are talked into it. This is not fake. It actually happened. I was told that by somebody whose cousin was actually involved in the court case through a friend of mine who employed, employed him as a tech. I was actually told that. I said, you mean it's actually real? Because I wasn't sure with that because it did seem outlandish. It was actually real. Summer Wells, that's a church payoff. That's a church payoff payoff. I want you to understand that. To get higher up, this is the offering. Remember back in the day when they used to throw the babies into the volcano in order to stop the storms or get more money on the crops? This is the mentality we're dealing with. These fucking people think nothing of doing that. They think nothing of giving you their five-year-old, just like a crackhead who wants crack, so she leaves the baby in the diaper, and the baby in the diaper gets manhandled all over the place well that one goes and does crack oh yes they did i did a video on john benet i know what happened there business deal business deal eyes wide shut eyes wide on whatever that is eyes wide shut when nicole kidman and tom cruise go into the store and they men take off with the daughter what do you think's happening there what do you think that is it's not about sex it's fucking a ritual <laughs> and though they they've agreed to get status Here's our offspring. Now we're going to be big businessmen. Hee-haw, right? I mean, come on now. Eyes wide shut. Thank you. I never watched it. But that's what that is. I saw that scene. That's what that is. That's it. Uh, they don't care. No, they don't care. They just want, they're sold out. They've been sold a lie. Look, go back and look at Whitney Houston's funeral. And look at everything you see outside of that gospel singing woman's funeral. Egyptian sarcophagus or coffins or whatever. Go look. R. Kelly singing there. You don't think they knew what R. Kelly was a big damn pimp for the music industry executives? That guy was roped in as a pimp. They used him as a pimp. Madeline McCain. That's a setup. Jeez, I can't. I just can't. I just can't. I just can't. Devil's Advocate movie. I just literally can't. It, it's so far around you. The devil lies. Here's another lie. Oh, they tried to kill Whitney all the time. And they took her kid out. And they took Bobby Brown's kid out. But they're sold out. I feel sorry for them. Because once you realize that it's a fucking lie. And not everybody's going to make it to, to Whitney Houston's status. She probably was born into a family of that. Like Tom Hanks. But you're not going to make it into that status. So you know, other shit's going to happen, right? All kinds of stuff. Now, here's, here's another thing that they do. Remember, it's a spiritual war right now, and they're fighting us. And by the way, just like the lawsuit I'm in, and I'm going to mention it the fuck again, because you stupid motherfuckers are suing me. Just like the lawsuit I'm in, okay? If, if, if you are out there public talking about what happens to children... And you're trying to shut me up by doing a sleazy move to attach to property, money, and all kinds of things. 
you are one of them because you think you're just going to attach. Rosemary's baby frightened the shit out of me at 13. I was in private school. I was eating cookies. And what do these people think of gays? Well, see, they, 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 they encourage transgenderism and gayness and all of that because Whitney was out on the ethers. Whitney was out on the ethers. And they're tricked. They believe they're going to be kings and queens of this new dimension out here. Really, they're captured. It's a fucking lie. They put a hologram in front of them. Like, we have a hologram that says we went to the moon. Because we went to the moon. <sighs> because the technology doesn't exist anymore. Oh, my God, the phone's back. NASA, where is the technology for the moon? I don't know. doesn't exist. What kind of a crock of shit is that? Crock of shit. <laughs> yeah, okay. 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 Sure. No. What is that? Okay. What is that? What is that? I need to understand that. Why you think you went to the moon? What the fuck is that? Just shut up. How dumb do you think we are? We are so dumb right now that we are believing all of this garbage. Okay. I don't want to talk about the pox, the monkey pox. I don't want to talk about the pox chicken. Why is it chicken pox? Who's fucking chickens? Why is it monkey pox? Who's fucking the monkeys? Stop with the animal slash pox. Please. Leave the chickens alone. Leave the chickens alone. Leave the monkeys alone. And now I'm on TikTok and some woman is like, I got my vaccine for the M pox. And now you people aren't going to vaccinate your kids. I'm like, are you stupid? If I have to listen to you being stupid, I may have to get ghetto on you. I may just have to go gangster on your ass. I mean, please. I don't even know what to say. I don't. Yeah, I'm live. All right. Um, yeah, I don't know. They blame it on monkeys. It's a monkey. It's a monkey. It's a simian disease. AIDS. It's a monkey. It's a monkey. It's a monkey. It's a monkey. No. It's not a monkey. Monkeys do not like you saying that about them. Monkeys are going to rule the world one day. They're going to come back and bitch slap the scientists. The monkey's going to grab the scientist and go, shut up. And that's what's going to happen. <laughs> the monkeys are like, excuse me. We did not do that. Um, yes, of course it's coming. It's, but, but see, they put it into the gay communities too. But you will notice that all of your celebrities Celebutards, celebrities, Magic Johnson, Dwight, whatever his name is, basketball, Warren Beatty, Charlize Theron, um, Angelina Jolie, Madonna, they all got their kids wearing, um, they all got their kids wearing man clothes, I mean, switching genders, and they're all, thank you so much for that, thank you, yeah, thank you very much for that, you guys. They've all got their kids wearing all kinds of everything, okay? Like they're not girls, they're boys, they're this. Cher, how come the celebutards have all of this shit going on and we're supposed to just like idolize them? <laughs> I got my, my, you know what I'm doing? I'm holding my breasts up during menopause. No, this is my country folk outfit. This is my, um, what do you call them? <laughs> overall. I've got my hands in my overalls like a farmer. They think we're stupid. We're not stupid. I've never been stupid. Again, when I was a child, how old was I? 13. I hadn't run away yet. Lee Remick filming a movie in Toronto. There was one John. I danced like a bitch. Excellent dancer in the movie Grease. On set, tried to pick up a young male friend of mine back then. And I'll use the word allegedly, but I stood there and my friend came back and said, he was like 15. You'll never guess. So these people know that they're getting street tricks from street tricks and doing all kinds of things and then act like we should fucking listen to them. We should listen to them. Why am I listening to you exactly? Why am I listening to you? I want to know. And they do it to themselves. Okay. So Deanna taught me this a long time ago. They do it to themselves. Meaning, when they project onto God's children, harm, evil, especially now, especially now, it will go back on them. Yeah, no, Lee Remick wasn't doing anything. She was filming a movie in Toronto. It will go back onto them. 
well, the Georgia Guidestones are removed now, and now we can't prove they existed. So when my grandkids grow up, they're going to be, what Georgia Guidestones? Because suddenly they're poof, gone. Poof, gone. Whew, scopolamine into midair. So they do this on purpose, right? Yeah, the scientists need to stop monkeying around, those bitch-ass scientists. Trust the science. I don't want to trust the science. I'll trust it when I choose to trust it. They used to tell you smoking was good for you. It's not. Oh, a couple of drinks a day are good for you. It's not, okay? Here, eat processed turkey. No good. Here's some gummy bears with red dye 40 in it. No bueno. Okay, the scientists approved all of that. Oh, and I forgot. Please, please vag yourself with the needle, the vag needle for the C19, crotch 19. Please vag yourself with the needle and understand when you do that, right? When you do that, you know what happens, right? You still get sick because hasn't Biden been badged like 19 times and isn't his wife now sick? So exactly why am I going to do that? Not doing it. No, not doing it. So I don't know who's really done what. What I can tell you is if you choose to sell out, the only person I know for sh drinking while pregnant, no problem. Yeah, gulp that wine back while you're pregnant. Just do it. No, don't listen to me. So, yeah, I tear. I, I, and they made fun of Trump's wife. But Jill Biden, what, she a fashion icon? She a fucking fashion icon? I don't think so. I mean, I'm not a fashion icon, but I know that bitch is not one. I mean, first lady, sorry. Forgive me. Anyhow, when you look at them, when you look at them, when they're talking about, when really overly religious people get mad that you speak to people that have crossed over, they're talking about, when you speak to the dead, because if you're truly talking to the dead, they've lied to us. The dead are the undead. Those have stepped away from God and sold out completely and have no connection to the light. That's what they're talking about. That's demonic possession. You are not in God's light. So when they're talking about that, they're talking about it from that perspective. We're told like when my Keithy died and when everybody's children died here, they're, they're, uh, that the people that have kids like Angie, Jackie's Angie, oh, let's all say prayers for Jackie. Jackie needs our prayers. And anybody who prayers, I would like to say prayers for my friend Walter who passed away today. Um, that he make a very peaceful journey back over on the other side. He already crossed out and I feel like he will. But I would say prayers for Walter and I would say prayers for Jackie and anybody else who needs them. And Jamie who had a hysterectomy and is having pain. But I would say that prayers for them. Um, yeah, Walter passed. So he was such a nice man. Um, very sad. I don't like it when people pass, but when they pass, they're transferring dimensions. They are not dead. We call it dead. We say they're dead. They're not dead. That's what we've been taught. And it's a fucking lie. Okay. They live in another dimension. They live in another, another country put it that way. That's what they, thank you for that. You guys praying. Thank you. Jackie's alive and doing well, but sick. So she needs to heal. And Jamie had a hysterectomy and doesn't feel well. She needs to heal. And Walter passed away. So his soul needs to be lifted up with prayers. That's what you do because they try to keep you stuck here, but I already know that he's going to be okay, but still I pray for him. Um, so when you look at people who passed, you're looking at them crossing dimensions. They are not actually dead. Dead means not of God. That's where they fuck with us. So we're all afraid to die, but we don't die. They got us doing shit here as if this is our only existence here. This is our only existence here. We have no other existence. That's it. We're just here to make money and fuck around. Bullshit. We have a whole life that doesn't include being here. I'm not sure how we got here. I do not know how we got here. I don't know how that happened, but we got here. I personally, again, think that my face is on a milk carton in a different dimension and they're looking for me and I've been brought here. 
So I've grown up here thinking that I should be here. So it's like, it's like Steven Stainer growing up in a house that he thinks that that's his dad and it's not his dad. <laughs> he was taken. We were all taken. So this planet is not of God. So when you say that, when people say that to people and they say like, you know, um, why doesn't God step in? This is not God's atmosphere. God is protecting us. And when it is, when children of God are supposed to die, like my Keith and like Walter, and when they're supposed to cross over, they cross over as, as God chooses. Maybe they're not going to live well on this side, like Keith with his accident. Maybe he wasn't going to live well. So he's crossed over. They're crossed over. So God takes them over, but meaning over to the other side. However, on this side, this is run by the beast liar. So that would be Satan. Now I'm going to bring up another thing. When you're looking at people, look what they've got the entire country doing. And I want everybody to know this one because y'all, they give them the job and they get, if this shuts off, I'm going to shut off from the night. Anyway, they give them the job and, the, and they don't come in for work. So... Let's look at this. Everybody is on drugs. Everybody is on drugs. It's, they're on fentanyl. They're on drugs. That is Satan's game. To get you outside of your body. To get you outside of your body and on drugs. Do not do drugs. Do, ixnay on the drugs. Ixnay on the drugs. Okay? Ixnay. Because they want you on drugs because drugs is a fucking lie. It's a lie. First of all, it feels really good. Like yummy cake, okay? It feels really good. You can never feel good again. Your body is sick. You take other things to avoid feeling sick. It ruins your health. It ruins your relationships. It ruins your work. It ruins your children, those relationships with your families. And you continue to get sick. You are then desperately doing bullshit in order to get the drugs. Terrible, horrible, aw. I'm sorry, J-K-R-I, I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, alcohol too, okay, like yummy brownies. Yeah, <laughs> yummy brownie, like that. But you never get it back. It's trickery, it's deception, it's evil. So drugs are the devil. They take you out of your body, you behave in the most immoral ways one can think of. You can beat your girlfriends, your wives, your husbands, your children. You steal money. You do duplicitous things in order to get money. You cheat, you lie, you steal. You basically become a piece of shit human being and your body breaks down and you never feel good again because you are physically a prisoner to the drug. Okay, yes, caffeine is a drug, absolutely. But let me know when caffeine, when you slap your children from caffeine. Having a couple of cups of coffee a day is not, espresso, whatever, is not what we're talking about. Everybody loves to do that. Caffeine's a drug, so is fruit. Fruit has sugar, also a drug. Yummy fruit. We're not talking about that. And we're not talking about anything in moderation. You want to smoke a blunt? Smoke a blunt. You want to smoke a crack pipe at Christmas? Smoke a fucking crack pipe at Christmas. We are not talking about that. So do not deflect with specious arguments about bullshit. Nobody's fucking their family up because of caffeine, okay? Nobody. People are drinking coffee in the morning and having a cup in the day, middle of the day or whatever. Nobody's fucking anybody up. They're not hitting their kids, hitting their husbands, hitting their wives. They're not doing that shit. So it may be addictive, you may have a point, but we're not, you know what we're talking about. So I love it when they try to deflect. They're, they're arguing semantics. I've had somebody tell me, well, you're addicted to hiking. Okay, well, shoot me then. Just shoot me. People are just, they argue to deflect from their responsibility. We're talking about fentanyl. We're talking about cocaine. We're talking about heroin. We're talking about alcohol. And we're talking about sugar diabetes. All of these things yeah, cake is a drug, but having a piece of cake is not a drug. So shut the fuck up. Anyway, you know. So here's the problem. They are letting, it is semantics. That's all they're doing is arguing semantics and stupid shit. People are stupid. You must be a stupid troll. You know, you must be a stinky, stupid, matty headed troll. Your hair's all matted. You don't look cool, troll. You are not cool, troll. So the drugs are actually Satan because it opens your soul up. And it leaves you open to entities 
And then what do demonic presence and entities like to do when they're attached to your physical body? They like to eat and fuck and drink and do drugs and cause chaos. So you, Mr. Working, let's say Wall Street guy, snorting the cocaine like this at lunch, doing all of this stuff like this, right? Let's say you're doing that. So you go home to your wife and your kids. You got three entities attached to you. One entity likes to gamble. One entity likes to fuck the neighbor. The other entity likes to eat spaghetti all night long like a bitch. So you gain 50 pounds. The neighbor tries to shoot you. Um, and you've gambled away your house money because you decided to do drugs and bring the entities in. Yeah, that's what happens. That is what happens. So it is satanic. It's act That's actually what it is. And no, I'm not talking about if you need drugs after surgery. Get a grip. There are appropriate uses for everything. Oh my God. Alcohol, they're chaos causers though. They're deniers. They're in denial. They're chaos causers. And they're bringing entities into their environment. So when your house starts causing chaos and there starts to be domestic violence and there starts to be gambling and there starts to be sex addiction and there starts to be pedophilia and there starts to be everything. This is what Satan does. He's got to get into your life. He's got to take you out of your consciousness with God. How does he do that? Have a drink, get addicted, feel bad about yourself, depression. Let me get into your physical. Let me throw the spiritual out. Let me throw your consciousness over here. That's what happens. So please remember that. Please keep your body autonomy strong now. Just keep it really, really strong so you don't end up losing or taking something home. The ultimate goal is the destruction of family. The family unit, family, divorce is not okay, really. Um, it happens, but that's the destruction of the family. Through the actions, had a tooth pulled. Well, then you need medicine when you have a tooth pulled. Um, that is what happens. Um, I kind of want to try all drugs now. Well, you can. That's up to you. But remember, it opens your body up. And kids are doing it all over. Why are they legalizing everything? For what reason? Why is fentanyl coming over the borders? But you can't eat in a restaurant because Gavin Newsom says, shut that restaurant down. Garcon made it in. Stacy, Officer Stacy told me Garcon made it in, even though they checked the ballots and there were double ballots, dead people on the ballots, all kinds of shit on the ballots. Garcon is now the district attorney in Los Angeles. That's nice. That's nice. And guess who funded them? Who is that you say? Oh my God, hold on. Would that be George Soros? George Soros funded him. Why are we voting for these people? Why don't we just take a big garbage truck and get rid of them? Seriously, George Soros, what's he doing? So annoying. All right, y'all, I must run. I'm so sorry. Got to run. Upside down world. Yeah, Satan's world. Mm -hmm. Drugs are a dead end road. Yeah, Soros got Garcon in. Drugs are it's a tool to get you out of your body. All right, you guys, peace out. Anyway, peace out, y'all. That is not scopolamine. Keep your eyes on scopolamine. They might even blow fentanyl and just put it on you like that. I don't trust anybody. Nobody's coming near me. No. <laughs> no. No, no, no. No more. <laughs> Bye, you guys. Thank you all for the birthday wishes, the birthday gifts, the treats. If I didn't mention anybody, I apologize tremendously because Mew Mew, and I'm not just blaming her, got on the table and knocked the shit off of all the order of everything. So hopefully I got it in order, but I did get everybody's gifts and well wishes and texts and thoughts. And thank you so much, y'all. Thank you so much. Scopolamine, it's a thing. Don't let anybody near you. <laughs> Don't let anybody near you. Okay, bye, you guys. Bye. Thank you so much. Oops. Thank you so much. Bye. Can't get this off now. Look at that. Won't shut off. Hilarious.